Right, now we're not just talking to somebody who's really high up in the old uh, Soul Survivor vibe this year. We're actually talking to a very good friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Summerfield. Talk to us about Rebuild, something really exciting that Urban Saints is doing now. Yeah, we've been doing this for about the last, I think, uh, four or five years. And basically what Rebuild is, uh, is an opportunity for youth groups across the UK to come with us either to Tijuana, Mexico, or uh, just outside of Johannesburg in South Africa, and to build houses for kind of homeless families or families who are in really difficult uh, situations. And uh, it takes about five days to, to build a house. And I mean, it's a, it's a life-changing experience, both for the young people, obviously for the family. Right at the end of the week, you hand over the keys and this family, they go into the house and they cry and you cry. And, uh, but as well as that, you know, in the evenings we, we kind of have a big camp meeting and a big, big top and, and uh, we see young people get saved and grow in their faith and prayers for healing and all this stuff. I mean, it's amazing. I've taken 48 young people overseas in the last three years. We've built four wow. houses and uh, it's just a life-changing experience and uh, yeah, we do it every year. Uh, Easter is Mexico. July is South Africa. So, uh, yeah, people should be encouraged. Get stuck in, get involved. Poverty is such a big issue, you know, in those nations that you mentioned, but also here in England. Yeah. Do you find that the young people, when they go, when they come back, does it change their concept and their view of poverty and what that is? I think it definitely challenges their view, uh, particularly when we go to Mexico. We, we arrive usually in LAX and then we get a, a, a coach down and then you cross the border from Mexico. And, and the difference is immediate in terms of when you cross the border. And so you've got, you know, lovely San Diego, you cross the border and then you're into a different world straight away. And so many of the young people who have this experience reflect upon, wow, I really thought that life was about my mobile phone or my games console. And yet here are these people and they have nothing. And yet they seem to be more content. They seem to be, have a greater sense of peace. And so I think it challenges all of the young people ab about that, about what's really Really important life in life, what really counts, and how they genuinely can make a difference. The challenge always, as you'll know, is how do they apply that to their daily lives on an ongoing basis? And I guess that's what we have to do as youth leaders, to continue to journey with them and help them make sure that those experiences don't end in Mexico, in South Africa, but their commitment to live lives of justice and generosity remains with them for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, one of the things that we're looking at as a theme this season is the idea that actually we do face tough times. And what's our response in those times? And how do we stay the course? How do we go the distance? Do you find that there are times where you just want to give up or you, you know, you're, you're ready to kind of leave the whole Urban Saints thing behind? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I remember... Uh, some years back, as you know, we used to be called Crusaders, and then we celebrated our centenary in the Royal Albert Hall. Come you on, were there, the band with name. And, uh, and we announced that day yeah. the new name, Urban Saints, from you know from the first uh, of January. And and after that day, literally two months of hate mail, hundreds and hundreds of letters and emails from people who call me the Antichrist, a disciple of Satan, what? saying that I've written Urban Saints out of my will, I've, I'm not gonna pray for you anymore. And I mean, these are Christians, you know, who who just really hated the idea. And I think it's at times like that, you just kind of think, Lord, is, is this what I signed up for? I just wanna see kids get saved. I didn't sign up for 600 letters of kind of hate mail. And uh, and I, for me, in in, in those really tough moments, there are a few things that are really helpful. First of all, you've got to have people around you, haven't you, who that when you're down, they're there to, to be there and, and, and pick you up. And I was very blessed to have some great people around me who were saying, come on, Matt, let's, let's go. We all need that. Um, but then in my experience, you see the fingerprints of God still, even sometimes whether you feel like God's heaven might seem a little bit silent that you just can see that God is at work doing his thing. But at the end of the day, whether you have people around you or whether you, you feel the fingerprints of God, we just have to hold on. I just think storms with God are much better than storms without him. And so I'd rather be holding on to him, knowing that he promises, as he does, uh, to bring me through than to be stuck in them trying to figure it out by myself. And so God is always and is always faithful. Absolutely. Amen. Preach it. I will. <laughs> um, what would be your best advice for young people 
who might be watching the program as well. Maybe they're involved in Urban Saints, maybe, maybe they're not. But they just, they want that. They want that staying power. They, they need what you've just been talking about. What, what's your best advice for them? Wow, that's a great question. I mean, I think, uh, I think two things. I think I would absolutely encourage them to make sure they've got a leader, a friend, someone who is journeying with them in life. I think we all need those relationships, people that they can be absolutely honest with about their joys and their struggles. James says, James 5, 6, 13, confess your sins to each other that you would be healed. And so we need people around us that we can confess to because it's part of our healing, and which is part of our perseverance. And so stick close to people, but stick close to God and don't let your faith be determined by what you feel, but by what is true. And how do you know what's true? The word of God tells us what is true. And so we need to be men and women of the word, you know, that, that not living legalistically, I must read my Bible every yeah. day, but I want to read it because as Jesus said, that when you know the truth, the truth will set you free and you discover that it, God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? And that Jesus is with you and that the Holy Spirit is in you and the angels are encamped around you. And so if you can stand on those truths that God is for you and Jesus is with you and the Holy Spirit is in you and angels are encamped around you, then you know you're secure. You know you've got a life worth living. And so, so I think, you know, sticking close to God, connecting with him, being real with him, but having people around us as well. Um, authentic, genuine, honest faith with God, who's our father and loves us, but with friends too. Wow, brilliant. Um, another question that we're asking all the people that we interview here at our half tent. Mm, it's nice. And non barbecue. Non barbecue barbecue. <laughs> but we won't mention that. Yeah, we won't mention that. Yes, yeah, so we'll overlook that. It looks very clean, though. Another question that we're asking is what for you is the best example or illustration or picture that you've had in your own personal journey of God's love? What's a, what's a story or a picture that you've had? God's I mean, love? I'm a father as you know of two boys Andrew and Daniel who are now 20 and 17 and and when I had children the kind of increasing revelation of what it means for God to be a father I think really came home to roost because you know my kids do mess up you know even now they're 20 and 17 but all the things they did all the things that they would do to wind me up and sometimes disappoint me and yet through all of that I love my kids. I can't help but love my kids. And, and, and I think just that reality, actually, that if, if I cannot help loving my own boys and I'm a broken human being who's trying to be a dad, then, then how much more must God's incredible love for me be that I'm his son? and he looks at me and he delights in me and he dances around me like Zephaniah 3.17, that he's pleased and proud of me. Not that everything I do, but as a father feels, you know, for his son. And, and so I think for me, it's, that's probably been the big standout thing, just recognizing as a dad, you know, I think I, I've just gained some wonderful insight to what, how God must feel about me, even in my brokenness.